I'm Sarah Louise Ryan and welcome to Love Lessons Live. I'm here at Circe St Pancras Champagne Bar and we have got a very exciting panel. Yeah. So this is a Valentine series about uh, finding love, building stronger relationships and this episode is all about first date first date etiquette and we're in the date den someone said before which i loved and um, so welcome i'm here with the head of beverages who's going to teach us a little bit about champagne uh first date etiquette and the things to do and not to do so welcome hello my name is joel claustre um, well welcome to to saint pancras and and this is champagne bar and brasserie so um uh, we here have have quite a lot of people coming to to, to our place to date so it's quite a common things happening um because of how romantic it is um but i think the 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 great thing to to to, to go through now is, is a glass of, of champagne maybe for your first date for valentine i think it would be perfect to start your uh, your date um recommending very much is a Laurent Perrier, I think everybody has heard of it. Uh, it is the rosé champagne uh, to have. Um, you know why? Because it's just so smooth, it's just got so much fruits to it, raspberries, and it's just perfect for, for Valentine, perfect for a first date. It is not the most expensive champagne, it is not cheap, uh, you know, and, and, but, but it is the perfect, perfect uh, champagne to have. Can we have a taste? Of course. Okay, uh, perfect. Please, all good, all good. Perfect, let's, let's tuck in. Cheers. 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 Happy Valentine's. Happy Valentine's. Happy Valentine's. Cheers. 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 Thank you. Cheers. 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 Also, the colour is very appropriate. Mm. Oh, very fruity. Beautiful. Yes, absolutely. It's got lovely, lovely richness of raspberries and, and strawberries. So, Joel, can you tell us a little bit about how Circe's really lends itself well to first dates, especially you've got St Pancras, you've got the Gherkin, and there's another one, I believe, isn't there? Well, we've got St Pancras, we've got the Gherkin, we have a restaurant in Blenheim Palace, for example. There's quite a few, actually. Uh, but predominantly, the one that really sits very well around dating and Valentine is the, 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 the Champagne Bar here at St Pancras and, and the Gherkin uh, restaurant and bar, uh, which is extremely romantic as well. Um, but I mean, the, the, the Champagne Bar is the one that mostly has, has a huge pool of, of dating and we, we see uh, an enormous amount of, of couple coming here for their first date or coming back for the second date uh, because it's just incredibly romantic. So I have Charlie Spokes here as well. I have Elle from Mutual Attraction and Charlie's from my friend uh, Charlie by the way and Kenny from The Man Whisperer. So some real experts in dating and relationships and also an expert in the champagne purchasing which we really adore. Mm -hmm. So um, Charlie can you tell me a little bit about navigating a first date? Have you got any top tips for us? Thank you. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's, it is obviously a really nerve-wracking experience and it's very easy, I think, to, to have a, a little glass of champagne before you start and drink it very quickly. My biggest suggestion would be don't overdo it in the initial sort of 10, 20 minutes on an empty stomach. So there's nothing worse than having a drunk date. Mm. <laughs> Love that. Very true. Yes, no one wants a slosh date, no matter how fruity the champagne. <laughs> um, Kenny, have you got any top tips for kind of no-goes on a first date? Because a lot of people, when they put themselves out there, they get quite nervous about uh, dating, I guess, and can often make a boo-boo on a first date. So have you got any uh, no-goes? Totally. Any, tell totally. us some. Don't use your date as your mother or therapist. <laughs> so many people debrief about this happened, that happened, this relationship, etc., etc. Also, don't use your first date as a checklist because these days with social, um, online dating, it's tick boxes. This is the person in front of you. It's playtime. It's not tick box time. So relate, hang out and play. Yeah. I mean, you're on a date, you may as well have a good time and no one's asking you to get married. Chill out and enjoy it. Yeah, enjoy the process. So exactly. earlier on, uh, we were chatting to Elle about, you know, enjoying the process of dating, even if that person you don't think on the first date is the one where you want to spend some time getting to know them. Have yeah. you got any top tips for kind of mastering the nerves on a first date? Oh, three things oh, go on. straight away is first and foremost, get some space, Take some deep breaths and think, this is how I want my date to be. So it's almost like emotionally go there mm. and bring that feeling to the date. 
rather than am I going to be this and am I going to be that and is she going to like me and how do I have to sell out and be a good act? Don't be a good act, get real. And time travel to the feeling of the ideal date and bring that feeling to the date, surely. Yes. Number two, go and check for bogeys because it's just so, do I look okay? Have I spilt something? You know, are my flies undone? All these distractions about, have I missed something? Do I have raspberry in my teeth? Go and check, don't think about it. Go and check, take some space, have some breaths and check to see that you're looking 100% you. Not right, but you, you, be you. And number three has got to be play. Just play. Play before the date rather than rehearsing lines and getting up tight. But come from a playful place because surely you're there to have fun. And do you want a relationship that's going to be hard work? You know, people say you have to work at your relationship. Well, you also have to play at your relationship. Otherwise, why bother? Yeah. So, how's that? I love that. <laughs> um, it's, it's just fine, Kenny. Thank you. Um, so, Elle, something that I was just thinking about when Kenny was chatting about, you know, really being there and being authentic on your day and really seeing the person and having them see you, not your perfect self. Um, something that singles can kind of get themselves into is something I call the comparison crisis. So, they're sat there, they're chatting to a date, perhaps they're comparing them to someone that they've been on a date with or romanticising a relationship that's passed and you know that was a great relationship but it ended up looking for someone similar how can singles get past the comparison crisis oh gosh oh well it's a big one amen to that Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> everything, everything you said that yeah, that was brilliant i think um slightly i guess it goes the other way to what you said though it's almost and sort of what you're saying as well um sarah is also just try not to over sort of theorise everything because I think if, if we're all there and we're about to go on a date and we're thinking right got to be funny and oh well I've also got to show empathy and I also need to do this and I've got to be charming and I've got to uh, honestly like we'll all go mad and you, you'd be able to see straight through it and I think you've just got to sit back, play, enjoy the ride and have fun and actually in terms of um, I've completely forgotten what you've asked me, the question. The comparison crisis. The comparison, that's it, the comparison. Um, treat each one, it's case by case. You, you've got to treat each individual on each day as a totally new person, a new human being, a yeah. new opportunity. And I think that it's really important that you don't bring any of your emotional tie backs or, or um, any individuals that you might have in your head. You've got to focus on the person right in front of you and uh, enjoy it. Amazing, amazing. So it's a whole process, it's a new person each time you go on a date and really enjoy that in a positive way and be, be, mindful. Play, be mindful, be playful. Yeah. Yeah. So one big question which I know so many people cover and it's a bit of a tricky one, who should uh, pay on the first date? Should we oh, go to the, the dating expert? Going <laughs> we're going there, we're going there. <laughs> well let's be old fashioned, I think the man should, should oh. pay. Uh, um, and, you know, and I'd say probably 90% of the time is they the man do. that pays, but uh, I don't see any, any, any problem with that. I think it's, it's, uh, it is what romance is about, and, and I, I can't really see being criticised for that at all. No. Um, if, if the lady wants to do and, and pay, that's, that, there is no, no, no problem with that at all, but usually it's the man. Let's pass it over. Charlie, what do you say? Thank you. Um, it's quite an interesting conundrum, actually, and I think especially with the Me Too movement and, and everything that's come about from that, if somebody offers to pay, they're not doing it to offend you, they're doing it because they want to. And be gracious and accept it. If, if somebody says, no, I'd like to split it, again, be gracious and accept it. It doesn't matter who pays at the end of the day as long as you're having fun. Oh, I love that. Um, do we have any other opinions on the matter? Any, anyone like to have their two cents? After you. Go on, Elle. Wait, but I'll... Well, no, I, I think, um, again, if you're, if you're being invited, whether that be the male or the female, the person who's invited you on that date, I do think, actually, you know, you may have chosen the restaurant, you may have chosen the activity, therefore you should be paid because you've invited them on this. Um, but by no means should you just sit back and not put your hand in your pocket. I think there should be an element of either buying the drinks before the dinner yeah. or after the dinner or just contributing to some element of the overall night um, or day. So yeah, a bit of both. Let's um, bring both to the party. T uh, a terrible joke. Uh, 
everyone should put their cards on the table. Oh. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that in there. What do you think, Kenny? Do you know, I'm shocked. It's so, so valuable to have information that 90% of the men pay. Um, I didn't know that. And I totally agree with you. Whoever invites, yeah. it's like, this is my invitation. Yeah. And I feel, not only is it not about who pays, but it's so much about what is this relationship about and where are our boundaries and how am I with sharing and how am I, how am I with being equal um, and it's quite old fashioned for the man to pay um, and I guess I'm quite an old fashioned man. On the other hand there can be an unspoken I have paid therefore blah 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 whatever it is mm. therefore you owe me therefore I have the power and that works both ways um, and I wonder whether it's also to do with wealth and choice because these days there are a lot of more wealthy women than men or women who earn more um, and there are a lot of house husbands so it's not about male or female I wouldn't even say it's about masculine or feminine I'd say it's more of a test run of how are we together how mm -hmm. do we share a space and how do we communicate boundaries and communicating boundaries is so intimate so may as well start with your credit cards on the table amazing thank you so <laughs> much Kenny and so finally if I could get from you in a nutshell just a couple of words of how um, singles can be confident in putting themselves out there in real life this Valentine's Day such as coming to Circe's for a glass of fizz with a date rather than staying online any thoughts uh, just be yourself to be honest I think uh, I think that's what from what everybody said I think is you know when you're meeting somebody yes it might be daunting because you, you want to impress but be yourself just be yourself you know and it usually goes very well because everyone uh, else is taken absolutely we can see <laughs> <laughs> maybe not but <laughs> but you, you know we, we we do see you know people that try to impress too much and, and tend to be the one that don't really probably end up well thank you um, so much I'm Sarah Louise Ryan and this is Love Lessons Live